Hey all, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up the UI for a shop so that it's both functional and scalable. By the end of the video we'll have a, something that looks a little bit like this, only not as pretty, just the functionality side. I was helping someone recently with setting up a shop and I noticed that people don't apply any sort of process creating a shop. So what happens is while it might work for a small, very small shop, it ends up not being very scalable. And any type, anytime you need to edit it, there's a lot of rework that's involved. So creating something that is quite simple and easy to edit is really the way to go for shops. By the end of this tutorial, we'll have something that's functional but not pretty, and then we'll create a second tutorial around filling out all of that data based off scriptable objects. I've also got another video on scriptable objects if you've never used them before, so please check that out. So let's talk about how the UI for a shop should work. I like to think of it in terms of containers, so I'm going to put up an infographic up the top left that just sort of goes through the phases, and each container that we have will have little containers inside of it, and that will make up our shop. Each of those containers are also game objects, so it's quite simple to visualize in the hierarchy as well as in the infographic at the same time. So initially, I'm going to right-click, create a panel with my UI, and it's going to automatically create a canvas if one doesn't exist, as well as an event system. We're going to ignore both of those for now. The only thing we're interested in is the canvas. I'm going to rename that one Shop, and this is my very first container. Underneath that, I'm going to be adding another panel, I'm going to shrink that one down and I'm going to add to it a text mesh pro and we're going to call it our heading or header. That's fine. Center align. And this here is again, another little container and that container is called our header. So we're going to minimize that because we're not really going to be doing anything with it. Go back up to our shop, create another panel again, this time drag it down a little bit think about here is fine. We're going to rename this one scroll rect. And then inside of that scroll rect, we're going to create another container, this time a UI panel, same size, but we're going to be left aligning this. If you've never played with any of these rect uh, transform options, if you left click it and then you hold down alt, and then left click to left align it, it will move the object, which you won't notice inside of here because currently it's the same size, but it will move the object to be left aligned uh, in there. We'll be doing this a few times in the tutorial, so uh, just make sure you know how that works. With this, we're also going to be renaming this to contents. And the reason why I'm renaming this is to align it with the components that we're gonna be adding to it. It just makes it easier when you're looking through the hierarchy to know which part is which. So you can come up with your own naming convention, that's fine. It's just the way that I like to go about it so I always know where each thing is. Inside of the contents is where we're actually adding the items of the shop, so to speak. So I'm gonna add that as an image. I'm again going to move the rec transform to the left-hand side, holding Alt again and left click. I'm going to rename this item template and I'm just gonna move, expand it up a little bit and expand it down a little bit, about that's fine. Expand it out a little bit, and you can play with this. I'm not really too worried about sizings and so on because ultimately you're going to be adjusting this to fit a shop within your game. So I've got my panel here. Inside of this panel, I'm going to add some information for my shop. So a text mesh pro, we're going to take that and just make it black so we can see it for now. Drag it up to the, actually wait, we will align it to the top. Drag it down a little bit to there. Make it fit within the constraints of our sizing and we will name this title for now. Center align this just so it looks a bit nicer. Rename that one title and then control D duplicates the game object. So I'm gonna duplicate it and then I'm gonna drag it down and I'm going to expand this one down a bit and we're going to rename this description. I might drop that down to about a 15 or so, and I will top align that text. Rename this item description, and then duplicate it one more time. Again, drag it down, make it a little bit smaller. This is where I'm going to put the price of the item that we're buying. So I might call this 500 coins just for now as an example. I'm going to call this purchase price. And then back up in our item template, 
we're going to create a brand new UI text mesh pro button. I'm going to bottom align this. So again, remember holding alt left click and then drag it up just a little bit. And we're going to rename the button to purchase button. I prefer using BTN in a lot of my text elements and, and button elements, just so I can identify them. I put BTN and then generally on these ones, I put TXT. Uh, so I know what the element is when I'm looking through my code or when I've got them assigned to scripts. And we're going to call this purchase text. I might call that purchase button text actually. Some of these things seem a little bit anal to begin with, but once your project has, you know, several hundred game objects and you've got multiple menus, it really helps to know which object just at a glance they are. Now, the next thing I would like to do is go to my item template. I'm going to right click my assets folder and create a folder called prefabs. In my prefabs, I'm going to drag in my item template. Now, the reason why I do this, it might not be apparent when you only have one or two items in your shop, but if your shop has 30 to 40 items and you realize you want to change an element, using a prefab template for this allows you to update all of these items at once. I'll demonstrate this a bit later once we've finished our shop, uh, but for now, just know that this is a really, really scalable way to uh, manage the items inside of your shop. So now we've got the basic outline of what we want our shop to be. Let's have a look at how we can make this actually function. So we're gonna click up to our contents game object. We're gonna add a content size fitter to it. And we're gonna be changing this to preferred and preferred. Don't worry about how this moves it around on the screen for now, we'll, we'll fix all of that after. The other element that we're gonna add is a horizontal layout group. We're gonna uncheck force expand child width. Now for our contents here, I'm going to just left align this again. It is still left aligned, but this just re realigns it because we've added a component to it. So doing that same alignment again, we've now got this in the right place, but we notice we've probably got a little bit of padding we wouldn't mind adding here just so the shop actually contains the item. So inside of our horizontal layout group, I'm gonna change this to middle left just so it's centered. And I'm also going to add a left padding of about 15. I'm also going to increase the alpha here so you don't have to see this content item. It's really just a way that we can keep it nicely inside of our scroll rect without it looking a bit funky. I'm also gonna add a right padding of about 15 as well. And again, I'm going to just fix up that alignment so it fits. And now what you'll see if I duplicate these game objects is that it will start creating them and it will force them together. So that's what is happening because we're using a horizontal layout group. I'd also like to add just about a 15 spacing between them. So there's a nice little gap between the items. And the one other thing that we need to do is you'll notice that when I've duplicated them, it's creating them all and pushing them off the screen here. I want the leftmost object to be on the left side of the scroll rect. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this X pivot and I'm gonna make this zero. And one more time, just realign that there. Now what we'll see is every time I duplicate this, it builds it onto the right of the game object. So I could do this forever and it will just keep creating this item to the right. And that's what we want because when you open up a shop, you think, okay, this is my first item and then every other item after that. Makes sense. So I'll leave all those items there, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, so we finished with our contents now. We're gonna move up to our scroll rect game object. And as the name suggests, we're gonna be adding a scroll rect to it. Now this has a lot of customization that you can do in here. I find a lot of it sort of pointless, the scroll bars and the viewports and so on. So instead, the way I like to do this is I get my contents and I drag it onto my content game object. Uh, component. And then in this case, because I want to be horizontally scrolling, I'm going to remove the option to vertically scroll this. If you were creating a vertical scroll bar, obviously it would be the inverse and you'd be able to vertically scroll. But in my case, I want to do this horizontally. I'm not going to change any of these other settings. I actually find them to be the default quite nice. So now let's give it a test. 
I hit play. And what you'll see is I can now scroll this and move this along. I can't scroll this up and down, and I can scroll all the way to the end without it snapping back, and it can't keep going off into the distance. Uh, that has happened before. <laughs> okay, so we've got our template set up, and we've got our functionality there. What we've noticed is, okay, so this button here, for example, it says button instead of saying purchase, when I would like to say purchase. I could, if I hadn't set this up properly, I would have to go into here and I would go purchase, and then I would click to the next one and I would go purchase. And then I could update them one by one by one the whole way through, but if I've got you know this many game objects, it's gonna take quite a while to do that. The second approach that some people might do is they will then delete all of these objects and they will create a new, they will duplicate them again, basically. So they'll delete them until they get to here and then they'll duplicate them again. And then you'll see, okay, all of these have purchased now. But the issue is that anything that you had filled out with this or any scripts attached to this have now also been wiped out. So you may have gained the time saving of not having to type purchase, but you also have ended up with having to redo every other element in here. So the alternative and the reason why we set up this prefab here and I will just undo my changes so you can see the button option here. So all of these now say button again, just control Z to get back to the state we were in. I'm gonna double click my item template. I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna rename this one to purchase. And then I'm going to click the little back button here to leave my template. And what you'll notice is it's updated every single one of these objects for me. Now this is extremely useful, even if you've published a game and you're confident with it, because if you ever wanna come back to it, let's say for example, I would like to add into my shop a second button. And in, with that second button, I might be purchasing with gems as an example. And I'm just gonna auto size that, drag this text up a tiny bit and see all this alignment is the kind of things that you would need to be doing on every single one of your game objects. But now I've got that same change applied to every single one of my template items. And it would keep all of the other information that I've assigned to it with it. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be running through how to fill in these templates with information based off scriptable objects and how you can use that to your advantage. Thanks everyone. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. It really helps out. Hit the notification bell, uh, leave a like on the video, leave me a comment of what you might like to see in the next video and have a good day. Bye.